So the Brightwater Creek watershed is a, a, a watershed that flows into the South Saskatchewan River. We're about 100 kilometers south of Saskatoon. The research basin, which is actually defined by a flow gauge that Water Survey of Canada has established here since uh, 1965. This site in particular that I'm standing at is a research site that was established in 2007 um, by uh, colleagues from Environment Canada. The University of Saskatchewan has been here since about 2012. At this site, we've been really focusing on sort of smaller scale processes, understanding how the hydrology operates at a point and then how we can upscale that to um, something that might be representative of a field scale. In the coming years, we want to apply some of, the, of what we learned about field scale issues and try to take them into larger than field scale, so to encompassing some of the, the adjacent agricultural land to this property here. We want to be able to understand how individual landowner changes and management practices will influence the regional hydrology and the regional climate in the future. Projections from models about future climates can then um, affect the, the individual landowner, right? So we're so not only scaling up to the model scale, but we're also interested in scaling from the model back down to something that is of interest to the individual landowner. Behind me is the, the main flux tower that's located in this area. So we have an eddy covariance system. We also measure a number of meteorological variables, air temperature, relative humidity, wind speed. We monitor precipitation, um, both in solid form and in liquid form. We have 28 soil monitoring locations within this field alone, and we can measure the, the moisture content down to 180 centimeters in depth. So we have a sodar to measure um, wind speed, wind direction, and also temperature profiles up into the atmosphere, so from the surface up to 500 meters. We also have a large aperture scintillometer, and that measures path averaged sensible heat fluxes over or path lengths ranging from one kilometer up to six kilometer. Right now we have it set up so that we're measuring the, the heat flux over a three kilometer path length. We also have a, a 30 meter tower where we're measuring near surface wind speed, temperature and relative humidity profiles. And we also have a relatively new uh, method of measuring large scale um, soil moisture and that's called the cosmic ray neutron probe. This site is an excellent candidate for um, research at, at all levels. It's close enough to Saskatoon that we can actually come out here for a field trip. We can show new and, and emerging technologies here. There's really some unique opportunities here because we have such a dense cluster of, of instrumentation in one area that covers a number of different scales. This instrument uh, measures cosmic ray neutrons, so it measures the the levels of natu this naturally produced background radiation. We can use this instrument to give us a measurement of soil moisture at the field scale. We can also use it in, in the winter as well to give us a measurement of the snow water equivalent. After my project is uh, complete, the methods that we tested here will then be applied to the surrounding agricultural fields. My study here is about the interaction between atmosphere and the subsurface. We try to capture the field scale uh, hydrological process at this site. This is a monitoring site for, for the subsurface. Uh, we have uh, uh, columns to monitor the, the soil temperature, soil moisture, and uh, also the groundwater. From this study, we understand the process, and this will be uh, help us to improve the modeling. And uh, once we uh, we improve our model, and we can get a better prediction for the uh, soil moisture or the runoff in this region. This research site really fits into the the Global Institute of Water Security theme involving climate change and water security. Right? So the so work that we do here and the the outcomes of the work that at this research site really aim to improve large-scale weather models, which then we can use to understand how the South Saskatchewan River base is going to evolve over time under a changing climate.